Hey everyone, this is Lori Fetrick, and I have a special announcement right now, and that is this. So really pay attention if you can. And that is if you go in and you rate and review my podcast, what I'm going to do is I am randomly going to choose one person per month. Yes, one person per month. I'm going to grab and I'm going to have you come on to my podcast and we're going to do a rapid fire. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. It'll get some audience participation out there. And I want to give back. So this is me giving back to my audience. So please go rate, review my podcast, and I will pick at random one person per month to come on my podcast and do a rapid fire. So thank you so much. And go right now and rate and review. We are chilling with ice. Oh, dude, we finally got Jeff's voice back. What? Right on. Uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a couple of episodes. I feel like, but wait, where are we, Lori? We're in your new studio, Jeff. Yeah, my, my phone is cutting in and out. Are we cutting in and out? Can you guys hear me? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. All yeah. right, so our guest is cutting in and out right now. So let's get him going. And let's okay. just let my audience know what's happening here. Everyone, you are listening to Chillin' with Ice, and I am your host, Lori Fetrick, and I'm so happy to have Leland B. Chapman on with me today, and he is a bounty hunter. Woo! And he's actually a reality television show bounty hunter from Dog the Bounty Hunter, which is, was, is your father. And I am so, I met you at the Comic-Con in... Uh, Albuquerque, and I'm really excited to have you on. And I mean, I've never, I'll be honest, never met a bounty hunter before. <laughs> right, huh? <laughs> I never met an American gladiator before. There you go. You. It's <laughs> awesome. So Leland, tell me a little bit, man. It's like, I was so excited. I mean, it's like a bounty hunter. I mean, first and foremost, you grew up in this, right? You grew up in the environment being your father was a bounty hunter. I mean, and I read your bio, you had a little bit of trouble when you're a little kid, which I could relate to because I was a little hellion, you know, <laughs> and um, you went into the family business. That is the coolest thing in the world. But let's yeah. tell me a little bit about working with your family first. I mean, how did that actually even happen? Well, uh, that happened, I think, when I was about 12. Well, actually, I started bounty hunting with my father. Uh, I met him when I was about five. He was in prison. He got out of prison. That's when I met him. And I would say probably by the time I was seven, eight years old, I was knocking at doors dressed as a uh, newspaper person. They would answer the door. I would ask for them, hand them just a piece of paper or whatever my dad gave me, step out of the way, and he would bust them. Oh my so, God. <laughs> uh, that's, that's kind of how I grew up when my, when, when I was living with my father, you know, he would take us all and it wasn't just me. I had other brothers and sisters and, and, uh, you know, he would give everybody flashlights. We would surround the person. He would be like, you're surrounded, come out with your hands up. And then it was just us kids. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, uh, he was smart, but you know, times have changed. You know, of course, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that with my kids nowadays. But you know, you know, back then, I'm I know sure that's was, a, that's what I was gonna say. It's kind of like the person that's being surrounded by, let's say, three or four, you know, twelve and fifteen year olds. I mean, what are they thinking? <laughs> like, is this a joke? You guys are like, well, <laughs> you know, by the time by the time he would realize it, he was already in handcuffs. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah. That is so interesting. So you, you've been doing this since you were at a very young age. Yeah. And so I know before, because I know that you have your own business now. So you you have your own business of bounty hunting. Can you actually tell my listeners know exactly what bounty hunting is? Because let's be real. All we see it is from the movies. You well, know, we don't even think that it's kind of like a real life thing. Right. Not on, not only am I a bounty hunter, but I'm also a licensed bondsman in several different states, and that goes hand in hand hand with a bounty hunter. You know, uh, basically what happens is uh, the bail bondsmen post the bond. They're be normally they're nine times out of ten they're backed by an insurance company. They post the bond. If the defendant fails to appear, then the bail company is uh, liable for that full bail amount. 
So that's when they'll try to find them first. If they can't, they will uh, turn it over to a bounty hunter and it's up to them to bring that person back. So everybody doesn't lose out on the money and the person who's guilty of the, the crimes, which he's already been uh, accused of, you know, is not out on the loose committing other crimes to stay, to stay free. So wow. uh, a lot of times what I do nowadays is I work for the insurance companies after the bail bondsman's they can't find it. The insurance company will bring me in and I'll go to different states or whatever, where, wherever they have problems. And uh, I'll either have a group of guys with me or I'll take some of their guys and, you know, we'll start picking up warrants. Like I just got back from Michigan. They had this one guy who uh, beat up a couple police officers in, in Florida. He pretty much was raised in prison, I was surprised that anybody would ever get this guy out of jail. And uh, everything on paper shows that he was still in uh, Florida, but it didn't even show he was arrested in, in Michigan. And just so happened, I heard that he used a credit card or something up there. So I knew he was still up in the area. So I got all the way up there. It's on the very tip top of Michigan, Sheboygan. And he just previously got into a two high speed chase with the police, not only the police, but the drug task force. He got away, took him on 15 mile thing through his dope uh, before he pulled his car over, ran into the forest and they couldn't get him. And he's a big boy. You know, it's not like he's fast or quick or anything. So we went over there and you know, he happened to live in a place where there has there's no local police. The only police are in the surrounding counties, which are 20 minutes to each direction, three of them. And uh, so it was like no man's land. So, man, I was I was lucky enough to uh, get him set up. You know, I, I knew I knew kind of who he hung with and whatnot. We started watching a particular person. Sure enough, man, we nailed them right when they went into the gas station. <laughs> so that was, I saved the lady her house. I saved the bail bondsman. He just passed away. You know what I mean? So he, he wouldn't have lost the money, but the company would have lost the money and his wife, you know, so I was able to get all, I saved them all of that. It was, it was, it was a large amount of money. So that's kind of like what, a what I do nowadays, but in Hawaii, I still, I still run, uh, I have a successful bail bonds company. I, you know, I opened my own, but yet when my, when Beth passed away and my father moved, I took over the family business out there too. So I have my son working out there and I have a couple agents. I have my son out here in Alabama working for me. I just opened up a company here, but it's still like, uh, I've only opened it up for a week or so. How old is your, how old's your son? I have two boys. Uh, they are uh, Dakota is twenty seven, I believe. Okay, twenty eight maybe. Yeah. And then my my oldest, our youngest boy is uh, twenty three. Okay, so they're 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 above the fifteen range when you started. Yeah, my my <laughs> daughter my daughter is uh, thirteen. She lives in in Florida. So this career path sounds extremely exhilarating. And it sounds exciting. And is that why there's such a draw? Like, I mean, you went into the family business. Your your sons are going into the family business. It sounds like, is this like this really exciting adrenaline rush type of job? Yeah, not only that, but I think a lot of it is, you know, this is not a job where you work nine to five. It's pretty much a way of life. You know what I mean? If you do it, you know, your kids, everything, every day, you're answering the phone, you're working, you got to go all of a sudden. So it becomes, you know, like a way of life. And I just think that uh, them being raised into that and seeing that, you know, and then getting a taste of it, you know, because I gave them a little sample of it before they, you know, dove head first. So I think that that uh, that all plays a role. What they do other jobs too, but they like what I do a lot better than you know what they do on okay. the side. So bounty hunting sounds extremely dangerous, though. 
I mean, you're, mm. you know, how many times have you been shot at, you know, throughout your career? Well, thank God, none. But really, I had, uh, there's guns out. We come across people with guns all the time. Uh, actually, I just had a close friend of mine. He had to shoot and kill somebody just recently on the job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, and I've had friends that are close friends shot and killed a couple of them that have been shot and killed. So it is definitely a dangerous job, but you know, I always look at it like, you know, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. You know what I mean? If, if, uh, if I know this guy is known for this, that, and the other, then of course I'm going to try to do what I can to locate him. And then, you know, have the police the guys that are trained to deal with that kind of situation you know because i want to go home to my family i yeah. don't i know what i'm capable of you know what i mean i don't need to be you know any more or prove anything to myself so my job is to be successful any which way i can if if, if uh you know there's times i have people located that the marshals were looking for. So I call them up, give them everything, let them do the arrest and take it over from that point. As long as they get arrested, that's all I care about. You know? so, so you're, you're, but there are, you're, you're, you're playing smart. You're working smart. I, well, I'm trying as smart as you can, but like I was going to say there, there are times where no matter how smart you play it, you know, it's, it's, we're in very da dangerous situations, you know, just like that, this guy, who was known for, he's a very violent guy. I called the police for help, you know, and basically they were like, man, you're on your own. Good luck. <laughs> wow. And I just got, I just had me and two buddies with me. You know what I mean? And I'm like, man, this was, this was a bad dude. You know what I mean? So I was like, man, and, and we got tasers and firearms and things like that. But Nobody wants anything to go to, to come to that. You know what I mean? So we uh, try to catch him with his hand in the cookie jar. You know what I mean? His, catch him with his pants down. And that's basically what we did. Have you ever so, been in a situation to where you actually were very actually scared? Oh, all the time. Really? All the time. Yeah, there's there's all the time, like every, almost every time. And anybody who tells you they're not, they're lying or they're just they should retire. <laughs> but uh but I I I get in situations, you know, I'm I go into people's homes of dudes that are, you know, this guy just try to run over a police officer. I don't know what it, you know what I mean? I'm in a home, all the lights are off. It's like that movie, you know, I'm trying to think of it. Uh we're all like, don't go in that room. No, no, I'm trying <laughs> to think of Don't go upstairs. The, I, like, <laughs> That's I, what they I, always one, do. One house I, I, I actually went into, and it reminded me of, uh, man, there's this movie, Silence of the Lambs. You oh, know shit. what I mean? That movie where, where you go into the and Man, I went into this house one time. So me and my dad, this guy was wanted on a $600,000 bond. He was wanted by, I don't know, 80 something counts of, you know, child abuse and this, that, and the other. And uh, they had like three counties of police officers. This is when I was young. I was young, young. I was probably like, I don't know, 17 or so. So we, me, me and my dad flew out from Hawaii to Colorado. And uh, man, we came across this house and it looked like Fort Knox. All the, the windows were like covered with blankets and trash bags and 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 uh blinds and whatnot so you know they didn't want nobody to find their way in there so you know after going around i seen a slice of pizza on the window seal and it was the window was open so i took the screen off i touched the pizza and it was hot so then I seen a shadow, which I swear it was the guy that I saw take off running. So I tell my dad, I seen him. My dad says, go inside. So I open up the window. I go inside and it is completely black and there's so much stuff. And it was like, these people were hoarders and it was like going into like this attic thing. And oh man, it was like freaky. And next thing you know, I, the lady had called the police 
saying that I had broke into her house. So all the police, you know, were looking for this guy. So they brought helicopters and everything. They searched the house three times with a canine and everything. They didn't find nothing. So all I did is I went up to the girl and I just was just making things up. And I had my phone and I was dialing. I said, yeah, I'm calling the prosecutor right now because, hey, you know what? We're going to take somebody to jail. And I found this note and it was a note saying, hey, he wrote it saying, I can't believe you did this. I can't believe you did that, whatever. And I found it and I showed it to her and I said, well, this is how they're going to take you to jail. And she says, wait, wait, wait. And she points and I moved a big old pile of laundry and there was a trap door <gasps> and this was all in the newspaper and everything. No way. So I tell everybody, I got this guy. I got this guy. Oh, I seen lights coming from everywhere. Wham. So then what they did was they opened it up. They sent their dogs in. Oh, they started attacking him. They drugged that boy out of there. And sure enough, they caught him and they said, man, three times the dog missed him, but the, wow. the little puppy caught him on his first try. Love that was all in the, that was called Longmont's most wanted. I think it was, it was a big story in the paper. So that is incredible. Yeah, you, I mean, you probably have so many stories and then also you guys actually did the whole tracking for was it the um, the Maybelline dude? Something about Max, you know, Max Factor. Max Factor. So what we did was we're the only the only non law enforcement in history. We're in the Guinness Book of World Records. Everything to catch an FBI's top ten most wanted fugitive. So that was me, my father, my uncle Youngblood. We caught him in in uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. We got locked up in Mexico, and. We 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 dug out of Mexico. We we dug out. <laughs> wait wait then, wait wait wait. What does that mean? You dug out of Mexico? Well, we were supposed to, look, we were supposed to check in every day. We we're out on bail. We posted bail. But see, here's how how it goes in Mexico. If it has to be a dual illegality, that means it has to be illegal in America and Mexico to really make a difference, to be a felony, okay. to make a difference. Right. Okay? So in Mexico, if somebody walks up and punches you in the mouth and you grab that guy or some shit and you say, please, this guy just popped me in the mouth, right? You go to jail for deprivation of liberty because you cannot detain anybody in Mexico for any kind of reason whatsoever. So in America, we have citizens arrest. So they don't jive together, right? Right. So in Mexico, they were deciding on whether to charge us with kidnapping a felony or deprivation of liberty. So it lasted for, I don't know how long, weeks upon weeks. We were there for six or seven weeks. And they decided on the misdemeanor. Because if you get a felony, you don't get a post bail. Right. You know, but a misdemeanor, you could post bail. So we posted bail 35000 that's 350 bucks or you know what I mean? Or right. 3,500. It was 10%. So we posted the bells. My dad posted a bell. We had a check in every day on one weekend. We just went all the way. It was July the second, right before 4th of the July. You know what I mean? We just, cause we said our, on, upon our lawyer's advice, you know, they can't come get you because it's not a crime in America. It's just a crime down here. So right. they're, like, they're like, don't ever come back to Mexico. I said, I won't even go to Taco Bell, bro. I'm out of here. <laughs> I boogied. We made it across the border, and then everything was great. Then a couple years later, after the show happened, we were filming. I get a call from Beth. It was like 6.30 in the morning. She's like, oh, your daddy in Youngblood, or your dad. And Youngblood just got arrested by the U.S. Marshals. I said, for what? You know, for kidnapping Mexico. I said, kidnapping? It's, it wasn't kidnapping. So then, you know, I was like, man, they don't know where I live. Nobody knows where I live. So I drank coffee. I took a shower. I got ready. But I said, oh, they're going to find me. And sure enough, my dad ratted me out for a cigarette. 
Oh my came to my God. house. But see, my brother, everything was there. This was the scary part. I had my dog, Shadow. I love my dog. So we seen them coming down the street. And they're, they, they started surrounding my house. My brother hits the louvers because it's all the, the windows in Hawaii is all louvers. So he hits the window. So it slams thinking, oh, you dumbass. So then they surround my house. My dog starts going crazy. They're about to shoot my dog. I'm freaking out. I open a door. And in walks my friend that I've known forever. And I'm thinking, hey, bro, what's up? I've known this guy forever. I had no idea he was a marshal. He's like, yeah, what's up, Leland? Sorry, bro. He takes off my belt, handcuffs me up. And I thought, man, I was telling him, yeah, I know you guys ping my phone and shit, you know, because I just called my mama, told her what was going on. So I said, ah, that was pretty good. And they said, no. <laughs> and they, they slid the door open and my dad said, my dad, my dad says, oh, I'm sorry, son, and he puts his head down. I said, oh, man, he just sold me out for a cigarette. <laughs> a cigarette. So that, that's what he did, a cigarette. So, so then we went to court. We went to court. I got an uh, ankle monitor. I had a post bail again, $100,000. Wow. So we were uh, filming with ankle monitors and things, and then uh, – the the what had happened was America. They said Condoleezza Rice, the the person at the time, traded us for a hundred and twenty one Felix Arilano cartel, low level offenders, but still, uh, you know, they traded us for them. So that was the prisoner swap, and they upgraded our charge from deprivation of liberty to kidnapping. So that they would have the right to come and bust this up like that. See, that's so, absolutely mind blowing that you actually got a fugitive, but yet you mm -hmm. were the one who wound up in jail. So did he though? He got fifty years, and it was worth it, you know. But, okay, good. But it all ended for me, believe it or not, because man, they was coming after me. Uh, I was, I bought a house, you know, put it in my name. And there was some money owed and nobody else. So they come after me just two years ago. It ended to where I was able to, you know, my house, everything is secure and everything was taken care of. So that's been, you know, a, a legal nightmare. So he's been in prison this whole time. So I would, you know, mine's, mine's better, but. You're just, so, I mean, are there, I mean, obviously, as you go on this path, there are obviously learning lessons to where it's like, oh, maybe I won't, I won't go to Mexico again and grab this dude. Or, or does I it never. I, okay. That's what I was going to say. It's like, screw it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're on that side. Unless it was something, unless it was my million dollars that my family would lose, then I would. Right. But I know different ways now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I won't, I wouldn't do it that same particular, but you know, they, we weren't trying to take the guy to America. We were going to take him to jail. He's the FBI's most wanted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anybody in America or anybody in the world, you know, could take him. So. Right. That's insane. And I mean, bounty hunting is extremely, this is the other thing. It's extremely physical. So you have to constantly train and keep up your body and make sure that you're strong, you're fast, you can handle these guys, right? Yeah, I do. Well, <laughs> uh, man, I've been, I tore my Achilles twice. I broke my leg, my other knee. So, you know, my, you know, it's, it's rough. I've had, you know, sprayed ribs busted up, you know, but like I say, nowadays, I try, I say that, but I just tore my Achilles, but I try to, uh, you know, I bring people that can do all the, that stuff, you know, but I'll, I'll get it to the guy. I'll figure out the best way to get him. And then you send in other of, people. But I, I do a lot of like, uh, nowadays, you know, I'm, I'm busting people like, uh, Man, well, they they had no idea, and they even tell me, man, that was a good one, Leland. Man, nobody could catch him. <laughs> like this guy is—they were looking for him for four years. 
I, I spotted him, spotted him, spotted him. The only thing that I could see was he had these big old uh, rolls on the back of his neck that I always seen in the picture, right? He came out to smoke a cigarette for just a second. And, and I seen that, and I saw that, and I was like, that's him for sure. So we went over there, and I seen one of the kids that I seen in the picture, so I knew a thousand percent that was him. He was on the run for four years. Wow. And and it took me only two days to catch him, so I was like, man, I got lucky on that one. Yeah, but is it really luck? It sounds like you're skillful now. You've gotten older. You've learned well, ways. I, you've I'm, seen I've, people's patterns. Yeah. I've always been real skillful and I've, I've learned from, you know, some of the best. Uh, but I believe that it's always a little bit of luck. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. Man, there's times I'll sit there and I'll be like, man, I'm trying to get somewhere and I lose some, something and I'm like, shit, I'm going to be late. I lost something. I can't believe it. I'm going to miss the guy. And all of a sudden I pull up. And the person walks out right at that second. I was thinking, man, what perfect timing is that? You yeah. Know what I mean? That's got to be luck. You know what I mean? That has nothing to do with skill because that's uh, that's just, you know, I think, man, I got lucky on that one. Dude, how do you condense, I mean, all this kind of stuff that happens down into a television reality show? I mean, there's got to be a lot that's obviously left out. I mean, mm -hmm. when you're going on the run, you're going on these bounties, and all of a sudden you have this television show that, what, you you cram everything into, what, 30 minutes? Well, some of them's 30 minutes, and some of it is, is an hour, but that's why some people would be like, oh, your show's fake. No, you know, nothing was fake. You can't fake that kind of stuff. And, and there's a lot of times that people don't understand. We had 200 and something episodes of Dog the Bounty Hunter, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of episodes that were lost on the cutting floor, on the editing floor because they missed the shot. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't get the shot, yeah. then it's no good. One time, I'll tell you this story real quick. One time, I was responsible for taking over the bounty for the day so i was leading the crew and i had one guy i had two people I, I needed to catch one of them was at his baby's funeral so i said man i can't arrest this dude you know what i mean he's a, at his baby's funeral this that and then i had another guy who was uh in the military i didn't know what he was in the military i just knew he was in the military got into some trouble one night, got arrested, and got bailed out. So I took the whole crew, the camera crew, everybody, over to Pearl Harbor. So I'm just looking for, man, I don't know my way around. Yeah. So I'm looking in a way, it's a gate. So I'm trying to wave at MPs, you know, they're waving back. I'm in a black SUV, I, you know, whatever. So I said, Oh, here's the address, and it ends up being a boat dock. So I went over the fence. It was real easy. There was no barbed wires, nothing. It was like I didn't know it was part of the Pearl Harbor part. I didn't know that. So I went over. I let the guys in. Uh, they came in. I went on top of this boat. It was like Sonny Crockett's boat from Miami Vice, you know, only missing the alligator. <laughs> so I arrested this dude on the, on the, uh, I arrested this guy, but apparently he was some kind of ninja. Okay. So I arrested him. I'm taking him to jail. He's like, Oh my God. I let me call my commanding officer. So I called this commanding officer, man, before I could even get to the jail, the, you know, the military channel owns A and E, and, and Viacom owns them, or what? Man, that military channel was calling up saying, "What is going on? <laughs> this guy just did that. This better not ever show his life day oh, because shit. all of this, all of these security breaches." And I was like, "Man, all I did was just walk right through there." Do you yeah. know what I mean? I didn't know it was a security breach. I didn't even know it's part of the right whatever but 
he was he was definitely like a Rambo, you know what yeah, I mean? He was, he was right. somebody like a Rambo. Yeah, like a Rambo. <laughs> so that, that, that show never got showed. Uh, there was a lot, you know, that we arrested somebody and they missed it or they didn't catch it. And, you know, so there was a lot that they didn't show. So we probably would have had three or 400 episodes. Wow, that many. Yeah, we had 200 and something. And, and you and met, I Love and- Lucy only had 80. Oh, I know. <laughs> 87. No, wait, wait. Are you comparing Bounty Hunter to I Love Lucy now? <laughs> no, but I'm talking about for running for long. Yeah, exactly. Long episodes, you know? But you're saying, oh my God, that you've probably, there's at least 100 episodes that didn't air because you somebody missed, you know, the actual arrest or they missed something or that's mm-hmm. insane. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Jeff, I mean, have you ever, I mean, what have, have you ever thought about, you know, the whole bounty hunter kind of thing? Not a whole lot. It's really kind of crazy if you think about it, because so Leland, is there like, I mean, how many times do you run up against the government, like shutting something down? Like they shut that down, obviously, you know, but did you ever run up against anything to where the cops are like, no, you can't do this or a, or a marshal says you can't do that because, you know, you're not in the right territory you know, that kind of bullshit kind of stuff? Uh, well, that happens all the time, pretty much. You know, like, man, uh, it's just, you know, like, I was just in Florida not too long ago. So I got there. I check in with the police, told them, hey, you know, we're here to arrest this guy. He's got felony warrants that are extraditable. You guys can extradite him. Mm-hmm. We're just going to arrest him. So the cop, the sheriff, it's a lieutenant now. This, and he tells me, if you do that, but I'm filming it. If you do that, I'm going to arrest you for kidnapping. Why? I, tell him, I just tell him, okay. So he wants me to wait for his deputies. So I have the law already printed out. You know what I mean? So his deputies get there. And I just tell him 45 minutes later, and my guy dug out already. You know what I mean? Right. He was gone. The right. truck left. But, you know, so I told the deputies, I said, sir, I could have grabbed the guy, but your lieutenant told me this. And I here's the law. Can you just show me what part of the law says that, you know, that he's, that I'm missing? And they said, well, you know. He's just new and he just didn't want the, you know, the liability, this, that, and the other. So, you know, sometimes, and you could go against that and take your chances, which some people will, but I just choose not to, you know what I mean? Yeah. We got our guy right. another day, right? you know, five days later and I got poison ivy, but <laughs> other than that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. But other than that, speaking you know, of Florida, have you ever found yourself like going through the swamps <laughs> trying to find somebody? Well, this last time <laughs> I was sitting there and I'm thinking, well, I was going to go, you know, I was trying to figure out about the guy. I was doing something over there. So I waited till about 12, one o'clock in the morning. So I go there and this is out in the like countryside of Florida, if you call it, whatever. Yeah. It seemed like the country. So it was a big horse. The lady had a horse ranch. It was probably 10 acres. So I was there setting up everything. And all of a sudden, it's about one o'clock in the morning. I see her truck pull up. So I, bam, I dive in the bush, you know. So I'm, I'm all covered and everything. And I wasn't really thinking about poison ivy or nothing. I was thinking about snakes, you know, and thinking, gators. Man, I know this place. Well, could pop out anywhere. I wasn't that far yet, yeah. But I'm thinking, man, I know they got all kinds of stuff over here. And the lady, she stood out there, all paranoid, spotlighted the whole place, like she felt that I was there or something, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, what is she doing? I had to stay out there for three and a half hours so i was like (laughs) oh so finally i got up i ran to my car and i and i was covered all the way but then i'm thinking 
that's when I first thought, what about poison ivy? And I said, <laughs> nah, I'm covered. I should be good to go. So like a day or so later, I'm thinking, man, if I had poison ivy, I would already have it. Oh, yeah. And then like the next day, the whole side of my face started oh. busting up with poison ivy. And then that stuff went into my blood system. Oh. And I got all jacked up from it. Oh. It was terrible. I have it. I'm allergic to it. Oh my God. Thank God I've never, ever had poison ivy, but it does not sound fun whatsoever. It hurts. Well, I've had poison ivy. It hurts. It hurts? Yeah. At least whenever I Doesn't got it, it, it itch? hurts. Yeah, I mean, it, it itches, but the more you itch, the worse it, it gets. Was that your experience, Leland? Whenever you got, I mean, yeah, obviously, I you got just over... was miserable. I was just yeah. itching and burning, and it's just, man, my friends are like, you got to shower with bleach. I had whole bleach bottles pouring over me. Oh. Man, nothing. Are you talking worked. bleach, bleach? Bleach? Bleach, like you wash your clothes with bleach. What does that do to the poison ivy? Just dry it out, they said but it didn't work. I was going to say. I had to get four <laughs> different shots. Finally. Oh, my God. No, I had it for like six or eight weeks. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah. Oh, damn. I, I only had mine for like time. three, four days. Wow, you were allergic uh, to it, man. Man. It got um, you. I was, yep. Okay, so not, our, not, not only are you like dealing with dangerous people you're dealing with elements you're dealing with like yeah. outside elements you know whether it be hot as hell you know muggy snakes poison ivy i mean besides the poison ivy has there ever been like the elements to where you're outside and it's like hotter than shit and you're just sweating your ass dying waiting for someone <laughs> that's what i picture it's anyway been, it's been it's been cold because i've been in michigan it's been cold, and man, we're up, and it's freezing cold. It ain't just cold. It is just, man, who can stand this kind of cold? Yeah. That's how cold it is, cold. And you're outside, yeah, and you're waiting for people. And sometimes you have to wait for man, hours, right? This is what happened the one, one time. I was sitting there, and I wore gloves and everything. I was all bundled up, and I was, and I took this minivan for the first time. I borrowed my friend's minivan. And I got out of the car and I was trying to shut everything quietly. And I shut my thumb in the door. <gasps> Boom. Uh. And I mean, I shut it super in the door. It wasn't like, man, it was in the door. It was like, I have to reopen this sucker, pull my thumb out. Oh my and everybody's God. already surrounded around the house. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is going to kill me. I have to go knock on the door. It's freezing cold. I'm thinking, man, I hope this. I said, I lady answers the door. I'm like, is so and so here? She's like, no, I ain't seen him. I'm like, all right, thanks. Boom. I just went back. I, left. I didn't ask him no other <laughs> questions. No, I didn't care if he was in the back room or what. Man, I was, You're like, I'm out. Peace was, out, man. Mm -hmm. Shut I my thumb in. It's freezing. Uh, it's I'm freezing. done. I'm in I haven't pain. I have eaten properly. I'm like, man. This sucks. See, and that's the other thing. You have to make sure that you have food in your system in order to have the, the energy. The, the last two times I went to Michigan, okay, I will tell you, I got hospital almost bound food poison. Oh, once in once in Flint, Michigan. Once in Saginaw, Michigan. I ordered food, of course, because I'm working late. And if you don't order anything in Michigan, then you don't get no food. So, man, I swung by these two places. Boy, I got so sick. Like, man, I said, from now on, I'll go without. I'll eat snow before I oh. eat anything out of here like that again. That's insane. So, yeah, that, that, that sucks. It sounds like your life is very exciting, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, it, it can get. I mean, do you have downtime? Right now, I'm on a downtime. Okay, like, so I just got back from Michigan. I just got back from Michigan, so I'm doing this, and then in a couple of days, I'm gonna go do help a friend with some kind of music video he wants to shoot. So, how often? I mean, are, is it just they'll they'll contact you when they need you, kind of thing? Yep. Well, I'm still working on some right now. I got two new cases, but I'm having 
some buddies pick them up. And so I don't have to go out there. I'll just take less of the money, and give them more of it. Okay. So I don't need to, I don't mean to get personal, well, personal, personal, there you go, personal, but is bounty hunting lucrative? I mean, is this like you can make a serious, great living or is it well, just kind of like, ah. well, it used to be kind of, but, and now it, there, there's everybody done quit. So there's not too many left because you have to be successful. So if you can learn to be an ex successful bounty hunter, then yeah, it could be lucrative. Like I don't sit there and just say, well, you know, I'm going to just live off of bounty hunting. I do bounty hunting. I also do bail bonds. I also do, you know, all this extra meet and greet things and whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, so, but it definitely, it definitely, uh, you know, can be lucrative if, you know, you do it right. You know, if you, if, if, but it depends, like if you spend all your money and your time trying and then you catch the guy, shit, it ain't nothing. But right. if you can just nail that sucker and do something that nobody else can do and just, man, then yeah, it's, it's lucrative. Like I just went up to Michigan I spent 13 days. I got nine people in custody. There's wow. been times I went up there. I was a 12 days, got 12 people in custody. There's times I go up there, I get five or six. So when you captured somebody, let's say in your camera crew, were they, were they surprised when they saw the camera crew or they were like, what the fuck is this? What are, what are all the cameras on me for? Did anybody ever do that? Somebody had to have done that out over 300 episodes. Well, our show got pretty popular. You know, it was, okay. it was number one. So, man, we were pretty popular. You know, so when they actually go got arrest somebody, they were not. And the whole neighborhood would come outside. Yeah, yeah. You know, take pictures. And, oh, that's cool. You know, I still, I still go arrest people. And man, there's I take pictures with their family members. You know, <laughs> it's like <laughs> so, smile. Yeah, whenever you're capturing somebody, they're watching the show as you're capturing them in real life. <laughs> <laughs> that that actually actually happened no and that was, way. was and it was on it was on TV that I was climbing and we were <laughs> filming the show and I was uh crawling along the back of an eye and I seen they were watching Dog the Bounty Hunter. That and a is lot of so people awesome. that we used to catch back then said, Oh, we were watching even people I, I catch now. This this one guy, he thought I was looking for him for five months and I wasn't. But he's uh like I was watching all your social media and stuff so i always post things you know differently you know sometimes right. i'm here sometimes i'm there you know <laughs> kind of throw them off <laughs> track so cool. a little bit yeah mm -hmm. can i get your autograph as you're like can you down and the I dogs know, right? are coming you got him on the ground he's like can i have a selfie with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah no this Hold on, my phone's like, hey, over man. there on the desk <laughs> he, he was pretty big and scary and uh i went into his house he was getting ready to hit the ice pipe he's a big boy and uh, he said, man, what's your name? I said, Leland. He's like, oh, man, that's what I thought. <laughs> right on. Nice. So, that, but, you know, I, I would rather have that anyway. You know, I'm, I'm 47 years old already. So, yeah, you're like, let's you make know. this easy. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So any future plans for another reality show? Man, I got I got a couple of little things in the works right now, so I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. Good, you know, good for you. Good. good. That's so, that's pretty damn exciting. You never know. Mm -hmm. You lead, but a it's something I, I've I've tried for a long time. But with a lot of elements in it, the way the world has has changed, a lot of that has been uh, it got uh, put on the back burners and things like that. Tell me just a, a, a brief little a snippet about what you mean by the world has changed and therefore you can't do it. Well, like when they had at, at the time, now everything is changing. But when I was, I've been trying to get a TV show for a while, but of course they had the George Floyd and they canceled all the police shows and everybody, you know, you go to Hollywood with somebody going to jail you know, they're just like, well, you know, yeah. it's different. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. But, you know, our show was the only show that never got canceled, never got taken off the air. Right. You know, we're different. We try to do it from a different aspect. Right. I'm not charging these people with crimes. It's something that they've already had to pay the piper for. You know right. what I mean? I'm just trying to save people from 
new loss and new, you know, new crimes. Right. Exactly. So, Put him behind bars. You know, it's kind of like being an officer of the court, sort of, kind of. That's pretty amazing that you can catch these guys and our uh, and our own law enforcement can't. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say can't, but it's the same problems with the local law enforcement. Like I go all over the country and it's the same problems that they have. It's like the world has changed. Nobody wants liability and shit for that. Hey man, they're not even sure what we can and cannot do. Yeah. You know, they're a new officer. They don't know, man. They're not sure. They never dealt with this before. What are you talking about? See, that's sad. You can't do that. They yeah, put the fear. Know? They put the fear in them to where they can't even like yep. arrest someone anymore. Yep. Yeah. And I was in Traverse City, Michigan. And I told the people, "Hey, I'm here to do this." The lieutenant. I says, "I need help." He said, "Do you know who you're after?" And this was another crazy guy. And I said, "Yeah, I absolutely do. I see exactly." He goes, "I just want to let you know. You know, I guess you're going to be working under the citizens' arrest law." I said, "Yeah," and he says, "Well, I'm just letting you know." I'm going to hold you personally responsible for anything that happens. Cause every time this guy would boogie from the cops, but I waited for the right time. He tried to boogie from us, but we outran him and caught the guy. You know what I mean? And man, when we called the police to come get, nobody wanted to help me. Wow. Nobody. I couldn't get it, the state police did. Wow. But what they did is they accidentally pulled in front of my guy's house. And they're like, Hey man, we're here leaving down. There. I said, man, you guys are right in front of his house. So they said, if he leaves, we'll pull him over. But we're not into hitting people's houses. That's so, insane. Wow. You know, the guy came out to light a cigarette. We seen him. He's a big old boy. So I thought for sure. And see, he outran me. But one of my guys who was this uh, special forces guy, he chased him down. But, man, he was he jumped in the air and he he was running down this hill like it was the woods and he was tumbling and falling and getting up and jumping. I was like, Oh hell no. I ain't doing that. You know what I mean? I'm like, nah, no way. <laughs> like, I, gotta get, I, walking, like, I gotta get paid I, enough to do this shit. <laughs> I, I was like walking back to the car. You know, I've been hurt so many times and shit. Now, granted, I, if, if it's something, you know, serious or something and this is my only opportunity but i'm thinking nah we're still gonna catch his ass because you know he had nowhere else to go so my buddy i was just trying to make my way back up to the car but my buddy he chased him down caught him at wendy's they called the police i called him i said yeah i got this dude in custody all of a sudden i see a whole sea of police cars i was like 30 of them i was like wow they said but not one when I told them, I need help. They're like, you know, nah. They're like, nah. <laughs> You're, on your, You're on your own, dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> you got this. That's pretty fascinating. If, you know, but is it lucrative? I got stories like this that'll last a lifetime. Oh, my God. That's so yeah. amazing. And that's I what I drive a regular car. <laughs> and you know what's so funny is you go when I said, Leland, oh, my God, I want you on my podcast. You're like, what are we going to talk about? And I'm like, are you kidding me? You've got like hundreds of stories that people are fascinated because if you think about this, we don't get to know what really happens behind the scenes. We only right. see what happens on television. So we don't know really what's going on. Like, like I mean, it's fascinating to me that like you might have him, um, a, 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 let's say a prospect and you go, eh, I know I'll catch him in the next day or two. You know, I'm not going to risk right. my life or my, my you know, right. my knee or my limb or something, you know, to get him right now. Well, well like I said, a lot, a lot of things have changed in the world. And, you know, whether it's the, from the police to the criminal to the bounty hunter, you know, everybody has uh, recognized that change. So, And it doesn't sound like it's you know, for the good. Well, you know, the good old days, that's why they say it, it's the good old days. Yes. <laughs> Them are gone. <laughs> yes, the good old days. Not good, but the good old days, you know, are not here no more. <laughs> that's kind of sad and yet it's still as dangerous as hell out there you know it's more dangerous now yeah because now it's like man everybody just disrespects and just hates the police and get out of here get off of this you know man and it's 
little kids. I had, you know, this little kid. I was in Miami. You know, we were in the hood, but we were in Miami. And this man, he's probably like 12, maybe if if not, you know, younger. Stuck his head right in a car, man. At the police, he said. <laughs> I was like, what? Wow. <laughs> Leland, thank you so much. I'm going to let you, I'm going to cut you loose. And I know I'll see you again because I know that we're going to, our, our paths are going to cross again. So thank you so much for being on Chilling with Ice today. Cool. You're welcome. All awesome. right, Leland. All right. All right. Take, Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you so much for listening to Chilling with Ice. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share wherever you listen to your podcasts. Remember to follow us on Patreon and YouTube at Chillin' With Ice. And on Instagram and TikTok, you can follow me at lori.ice.fetrick. I look forward to chilling with you next time here on Chillin' With Ice.